Meeting of the City of East Cleveland's Financial Planning and Supervision Commission. Council President Thomas. Present. Marianne Nowak. Present. Dr. Swanze Kaver. Present. Uh, Jeff Heinrich. Here. Present. Sharon Hanrahan. Here. Do we have a quorum? Uh, next item on the agenda is the approval of the prior meeting's minutes. And I would ask Mr. Heinrich to abstain. But we do have a quorum. No, we don't. We're going to have to probably swing back on this because we don't have four people that were here that were at the meeting last month. So we'll swing back on that. Okay. Well, we go ahead and um, go on to the report of the financial supervisor. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Um, just a few things today, not a whole lot to go over. In the financial packet, I'm going to ask you to, we have two different things. One is paper clipped and one is stapled. Y'all can't avoid it, you're on camera. <laughs> It actually had to be 
um, an expenditure to bring the cash over. Yes. Okay. Yes. Am I correct that there was no cash? Though? It wasn't cash, cash, if you will. It was just fund balances to reduce the fund balances to clean them up. Appropriations. City appropriations. The city doesn't use them anymore. Yes. Did transfer out into the general fund. We didn't get any more money, unfortunately, but it enabled appropriations to. So what about, um, for instance, the fire department, okay. which has an overage, I guess, of 260000 Good question. That is simply we're spending more than the 25%. That's salaries and benefits for the most part in the okay. fire department. Could be called probably overtime if you look at the detail on page uh, 12. Mm -hmm. You can see at the second department this fire. So that tells you to break down salaries, overtime, and benefits. And overall, um, we're spending about two hundred sixteen thousand more than what we have. Uh -huh. So is that the same if we go back and look at the transfer station? I'm sorry. Transfer okay. station on page seven. That's over 411000 Yes. The transfer station, we take the whole amount that's been transferred out. The city doesn't use that fund anymore. So the whole balance was transferred to the general fund. So next month, you'll see that number drop, that 411000 because every month it will drop. But there'll be no more expenditures out of that fund. It's 100% for the year. It's gone. Okay. So that's what that is. So in addition to that fire, you kind of mm -hmm. told me uh, police is over and refuse is higher as well. Those are some of the ones that, <coughs> as well as the service department. And again, it's all driven by salaries and benefits. So for the fire department, I know we had some conversation in the past about the minimum planning requirements. Is that the driver of that? I think or that's a good part of it. And did you have something else in January or something? January was a free pay month. So it kind of throws off the percentages of slightly until uh, the middle of the year when everything finance director was able to pay some health care claims, and those are part of these numbers as well. So, um, would you happen to know what the average uh, per pay period pay is for the fire department? If you don't, if you don't have it, you don't have to get it. Um, I don't know fire specifically. The city as a whole tends to round up <coughs> Salary, none of that. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Salaries. That's going down considerably. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so do you think the fire will average out by the year? We're hoping. Um, Health care has been, we'll talk about that. Okay. The pay right. but Health care has been real high. Mm -hmm. And so you're hitting the, that fund because those health care claims are Right. A lot of them are fire. Right. We get the distribution from the HR department, and she tells us where they should be charged. Now, refuse collection, is that based on the contract we have with Rumpy? Okay. And I think that contract is up pretty soon. In June. Thank you. 
at page A. Salad Jones. Right. It doesn't matter. 
five dispatchers. Or five dispatchers. There, you know, that ends up being two hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of salary. And then yes, I can do that. If the next one is, then divide that two hundred and fifty by twenty six, and then we would come up with for that department the one twenty six to pay, which is the the monthly pay for that department. Okay. Salaries and bennies. Uh, just salaries. Because the pennies are allocated. Well, that's part, of, that's part of the package, though. For some, that's part of the package because there are some who get uh, their longevity and their pay. There are some unions that get um, clothing, shoe allowance, and some of them are paid every pay, and some of them are only paid once a year. And that all runs through the salary line. But if you're if you're looking at the salary of, of <coughs> Sally May, then if you if you're originating it from your system, it's going to originate from their hourly wage, right? Correct. But that hourly wage would not include. Correct. So if you just go from the hourly wage, then I think for me that would be all I need. I wouldn't want to. If the shoe allowance ends up being two hundred bucks for the year, it's probably not two thousand. And and we understand, and I think we can make. I presume that number is probably 35% increase on to the, to the salary for the benefits. So we can do that math ourselves. Okay, I can do that for you. Thank you. Is there anything else? Just the aging report. I think that's where Helen's and Sharon's question came from. The total outstanding payables are about 3.9, just over. And the largest increase is the health care. So under medical claims. We kind of put last month's next to this month's and that is. So and then each, you know, we kind of try to put the bigger ones up top to segregate them. So we have not paid seven hundred and eighty-seven thousand dollars a month for this for the year. Correct. Well, most of them are for fifteen, right? Have we exhausted fourteen? Um, yes, we carry over some claims from fourteen, but those have been paid. Um, these are the new claims for fifteen. I kind of thought, and again, because I just did a real quick comparison between last month's and this month's, and I, I knew it was medical claims. I just had assumed right or wrong that this was an influx that had just recently come in, just based on the difference between the bottom line, not necessarily. They so it's probably from the first, right, but I'm just saying, as far as receipt. Madam Chair? Yes. Um, as you're aware, uh, before, um, I think it was last month or before, that as opposed to paying another bill, um, the financial people mm -hmm. called and asked me what would I do. And I informed them to pay the health care. Mm -hmm. And that's what they did. So, but I'm very, very concerned because we had quite a few people with catastrophic uh, ailments and um, uh, they had to be uh, paid. But we're still in an area where it's just not the figures on this page. It's that people behind the page that, that, uh, that we would call Sue the area. Um, and in, in some instances, um, they pass away. And um, I think that they're, they're doing the best they can with what they've got on this. And I was astonished at how many has grown since then. But um, going to um, 
uh, back to uh, self-insure is one of those not good choices. But you pay for the choices that you make. Well, yeah, I, I and, and, then, and then, but right now we're struggling to pay what we have. So basically, um, so. I'm not sure it would matter whether you were self-paying or not, because you've got the Kaiser Permanente bill here, seven hundred forty-one thousand when you weren't self-paying. So you haven't been able to pay health care whether you're self-paying. Well, I didn't say it would have helped. I just said it would have been a poor choice. You can ask a question. The Calumet County Fiscal Department, we owe $204,000. I don't know what that is. <coughs> I have to look into that. I don't use a search per se. Another young lady does it for me, and I have not had a chance to research what specific. <laughs> yeah. uh, please uh, excuse my tardiness. Uh, had a couple of things at the office, so it appears that I'm right on time. Um, <clears throat> I regret that I missed. <laughs> uh, just uh, as far as the options that we have at our disposal for doing various things, uh, I believe that all are well informed that there is a, a petition circulating that would begin the, uh, the merger process, these discussions, the study thereof uh, between the cities of Cleveland and East Cleveland, if that petition succeeds, to at least put that option in play, which uh, would ultimately be decided if it were to go forward, it could only go forward with the voters of East Cleveland support. And that option would not include a merger of the school district. Under Ohio law, there are two options for a city that pursues merger in that fashion. One option is to merge both the school district and the municipal government. The other option is municipal government only. The, the petition that is circulating is for municipal government merger purposes only. Uh, so just to share that. Secondly, the development of the uh, financial recovery plan that is required by this commission. Uh, we all know that we finally a little while ago, we finalized the budget, the appropriations for 2015, which was an important step before we developed the financial recovery plan. Uh, we now have the five-year forecast that's required to develop the financial recovery plan, and we are working on the financial recovery plan. We will, within 30 days, submit that to City Council for its consideration. Any questions for the mayor? Yes, I have one. Um, how long do they have? Uh, how long is the petition process? <coughs> is there a time limit on that? On the are, you petition process? Looking, are you just looking for X number of signers? The 
timeline for the petition process is up to 120 days. Okay. Okay. And if it would go to the voters of East Cleveland, then I guess it would what, be August. Is that summer right before the end of the ballot? I don't think that it would make it for August ballot. Okay. Uh, the the I don't so, think that the uh, I, I mean, don't think it would the, be there by August to make it for November. Yeah, I would hope that it could. Okay. But, but, um, the 120 days that is available on the petition, I don't think that that process will take nearly 120 days. Uh, the signatures, the signatures are going to be Any other questions of the mayor? Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Mm -hmm. well, Ms. Thomas, what do you have for us? Not too much because uh, not too much has happened. Okay. Uh, the uh, budget has been passed for quite a while. Uh, the mayor is stating that he has um, uh, been working on the um, recovery plan, um, but uh, every time that the question arises to the mayor and to the financial managers from the um, from the auditor's office. The response is they have not received anything uh, from the mayor. Uh, there has been no talks between the mayor and um, the council except to say, uh, what are you doing with the recovery plan? Is there uh, one uh, that you're working on? And the mayor has said no comment. So I'm glad to see that he's working on something, whether it's petitions or whatever, <laughs> and uh, something will transpire. Um, the council has engaged, um, and I think you know, I uh, have it on your, uh, yeah. on your uh, uh, agenda. My friend at 44112 News. <laughs> oh. uh, I wonder who that possibly could be. Direct me to that. Okay. Actually, I went on the website. Okay, and um, what has happened, we have engaged uh, Buckley and King uh, firm to represent us, and uh, Mr. Hughes, who is from Buckley, mm -hmm. and King has uh, met with the council, and at that point has uh, Counseled us, and uh, I would like to uh, read some of it. Oh, sure, absolutely. <clears throat> and we had a press release, uh, which I read to my constituents the other day. Mm -hmm. uh, legal representative, dear Madam President, this letter sets forth the terms and conditions pursuing to which Buckley and King LPA, the firm, or we agree to represent the city council of the city of East Cleveland. The scope of the services and efforts and attention. Can everybody hear me? Not really. Not really. Okay, let me do a. Just read on. Um, dear Madam President, can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> this letter sets forth. The terms and conditions pursuant to which Buckley and King, LPA, the firm, or we agreed to represent the City Council of the City of East Cleveland, Ohio Council. Scope of services. In efforts, in its efforts and intention to achieve an outcome in the best interest of the City of East Cleveland, the city, and its residents, Council had determined it wishes to be adequately informed of potential courses of action that for may be available to address the financial and operational problems related to the city being placed in physical emergency under Chapter 118 of the Ohio Revised Code. The firm's engagement will be to represent council in these efforts in three ways. First, the firm will assist council in to identify so that council can engage in court in court in accordance with the city's charter, ordinance, and other law. 
one or more experts whose qualifications are acceptable to counsel. Which experts I shall analyze, report to counsel regarding, pardon me, there's something to see question. Report to counsel regarding the viability or lack of viability of any such alternative course of action. Make recommendations for counsel consideration regarding the courses of action collectively, the analysis. Second, the firm will assist counsel in seeking to identify and secure monetary contributions and or support for third parties acceptable to counsel, which will which to fund and pay the entire cost of the analysis and all of the fund's legal fees and expenses. Third party funding. Third, the firm will advise counsel regarding the legal aspects and implications arising from the analysis. We will take reasonable steps to keep counsel, counsel informed of the status and progress of our efforts and will respond <coughs> promptly to all counsel's um, inquiries. <coughs> I won't go further with all of the particulars, but this is saying that we have engaged Buckley and King under uh, they're doing it at no cost. They're finding <coughs> funds from outside resources. And this is uh, what the council has been pursuing. We need to have more um, options available to us and to explore what is necessary other than merge. Madam Chair, we also sent out a press release uh, that I started to read to my people last night as I did a, um, a um, ward uh, meeting in Ward 2. Uh, contact Barbara Thomas, Council President, uh, Unity, Objectivity, Transparency, Today. Council, City Council has taken action to advance these goals and to seek the best possible outcome for East Cleveland citizens. East Cleveland is suffering. Her citizens are suffering. For months, all of us heard comments from the press and elsewhere that the city might be might file bankruptcy, as Detroit did, and some other cities have done. Late last year, the mayor announced that bankruptcy will not work for our city. More recently, the administration appears to have decided that our citizens have only one alternative left to be announced enunciated by our neighbor, the city of Cleveland. <laughs> the mayor has taunted annexation or merger as a solution to East Cleveland financial woes, as he had made several speeches about why he believes the city of East Cleveland cannot survive as an independent city, and why annexation or merger is the only avenue available. <coughs> but in all those speeches, the mayor has yet to give our community or even council a truly comprehensive explanation of the basis of his analysis and his conclusion. Instead, he urges citizens to sign a petition to commence the annex process. He says that studies will be conducted in the future regarding annexation, but has not explained precisely what annexation issue will be studied. He has named, he has not named who will conduct the study, and he has not identified by name who will pay for the study. <laughs> On these points, he has offered only generality and vague promises. Thus far, his approach lacks transparency. Well, that's um, City Council believes <coughs> the mayor has put the cart before the horse. Council perceives that the mayor has made his decision, and his decision is for annexation, and he will be commissioning studies to justify a decision he has already made. City Council thinks there is a better way. City Council believes that all <coughs> of the available options should be explained systematically by legal, financial professionals who are qualified to have no 
perceived notion of which option or options to prefer and who can provide an objective, reliable explanation to the city council and the citizens of East Cleveland. Regarding which options will work for East Cleveland and which ones will not. In this way, city council believes our community and our government can come together, united to have one single course of action to achieve the best outcome for East Cleveland citizens. That is why today, council has acted in an effort to keep our community better, assess all potential options. <coughs> City Council has engaged the law firm of Buckley and King at no cost. City's current budget to advise the guide City Council in seeking an analysis of qualified municipal <coughs> financial professionals who can provide the information that the city and East Cleveland <coughs> cities need to decide our city's future. City Council intends the process of selecting those financial professionals and arrangement to pay for their analysis with be transparent and known to East Cleveland citizens. The report City Council envisions will be clear and understandable. It will be made available to all citizens of East Cleveland so that they can understand what the city's available options really are and which of those options are not reasonable achievable. With this information, City Council and East Cleveland citizens can make more fully informed decisions. By taking this action today, City Council's intentions are allow the citizens of East Cleveland to receive a report that has been prepared by disinterested objective experts who have no political axe to grind, and who are not motivated by self-interest, and whose opinions are not tainted by any preconceived notions. Obtain a report that provides fair and unbiased portrayal of the fiscal issues East Cleveland faces, a realistic examination of the possible solutions, and recommendation on which solutions or solutions to pursue and why allow our citizens to finally have an understanding of presentation of all of the city's options. Allow an opportunity for our citizens to be heard. Allow city council to understand the wishes of East Cleveland citizens and do all of this in a fully transparent process in, main, in plain view of our citizens. East Cleveland, East Cleveland citizens deserve nothing less this time has, the time has come to give the information they need to decide which course of action our citizens should take. All of the council boards unanimously signed <coughs> this. We also passed legislation that uh, permitted us to engage um, this firm. And I think that everyone has, pardon me, uh, Chair, all of our citizens has been waiting to hear from the council. But I am one of those under the mindset that if you don't have anything substantial to say and you can't back it up with a fully uh, transparent explanation, don't say anything. But when you do come out, make sure that you have experts behind that has been given you council. The, council. the council of East Cleveland has never had this. Now is the time to step forth and give our residents of East Cleveland a full explanation, not run around picking, well, let me say that in a different way, because you know I'm not always politically inclined, cherry picking. <laughs> Therefore, that means that you are a whole entire community. You don't segregate and evaluate who you're going to talk to and play to the audience. You give them full qualified information, information for expertise. And in um, the press release, I have not, or in a conversation that I have not had with the mayor, but some of the um, 
residents have had, they fully, they still don't want to stay. And we're all right now hearing uh, a situation where uh, petitions are being signed. And on one of those petitions that was signed, that was given to us, it said study. But the petitions that people are signing is not a study, it's a petition to annex. So you don't go to the left when you need to go to the right, and you have um, done what you felt is necessary um, to divide and conquer. Our people here in the city of East Cleveland have been patient and steadfast, and they do deserve the best. <coughs> I am one of those residents, and God knows I deserve the best. Um, so, if I'm taking on this uh, initiative, I won't say fight, but you know what I'm saying. This initiative, I am saying that East Cleveland has to hear all the options. True. Weigh all the options. You don't go and buy a car and just say, I want that one. You find out everything about that car. Now they got the true car. So let's come on with the true information and not be uh bamboozled. I won't say bamboozled. <laughs> but uh misrepresented by misrepresentation. And um, Madam Chair, I thank you.